Well, I am Sayward Darby. I am the editor-in-chief of The Atavist Magazine, and I live in Brooklyn, New York. I've been a journalist since 2007, 2008, uh, when I graduated college, and I have worked at a number of different publications. I've been at The Atavist Magazine for, gosh, four years, uh, and Atavist has been part of Automatic for about three years. I wrote a book in 2020, it came out in July, and it is called Sisters in Hate, American Women on the Front Lines of White Nationalism. And uh, as the subhead of that conveys, uh, it is a book about uh, the intersection of gender and white extremism in the United States. It was extremely hard to be both the editor-in-chief of a publication and writing a book, my first book, a book I never thought I would write because I never thought I would write a book. Um, and I wasn't really able to take substantial time off. So I had a pretty regimented schedule. I woke up really early every day to get a couple of hours of writing in. Um, and I actually, I remember on one reporting trip uh, to the Pacific Northwest, I would spend like half my day editing the forthcoming out of his story and then I would spend the other half of the day interviewing subjects and transcribing the interviews. The Atavist magazine was founded 10 years ago. Uh, we actually just celebrated our 10th anniversary in January. And it was founded by three people, Evan Ratliff, who was a writer editor, Nick Thompson, who was a writer editor, and Jeff Rabb, who was a developer and designer. And we have a really small team. Um, I'm the only full-time staff member. Um, we still publish once a month. Uh, and each story has its own team. Um, and Ed uh, is the art director for all of our stories. Of course, there's the writer of each story. Occasionally, there's more than one writer on a story. Um, there's also our copy editor, Sean, who works on an hourly basis. And, uh, and then Ed always finds incredible artists. We like to think of ourselves as a place where young, or you know, new writers who want to take a big swing at a story, uh, who you know might not have their pitch answered by uh, a legacy publication, a print publication. Um, we're willing to work with them to help them take that big swing. I think in terms of audience for the Atavist, you know, we've always had a pretty modest approach. We know that our stories are long; um, they're a minimum of eight to ten thousand words. Um, and therefore people who want to really commit to reading a story. And we recognize that that's not everybody and that's okay. And so we uh, really try to focus on telling the most compelling stories possible and letting the stories and the way that they're designed really speak for themselves. Um, but we've also found that, you know, exposure for the stories, finding different places to share it. Um, so Apple News has been um, a great platform for us for the last year. Um, we get great referral traffic from social media. Um, and then we do have a base of subscribers. Apple News uh, pays us a licensing fee for our work um, and records the stories for audio as well. Um, and we also make money through Autumn, which is an app now uh, owned by the New York Times that records stories for audio. Our most dedicated audience members also are aware of our wider mission, um, which is something that in terms of engaging audience and developing audience, we try to promote a lot, along with whatever the most recent great story is. We try to talk about how important long form journalism is, um, how opportunities are narrowing in the industry, how we are trying to keep you know the doors open to new voices um and i think there are audiences in journalism and beyond who really respond to that so if you subscribe 50 percent of that is going to writers through um our royalties program which is very unique in the industry um and then uh any the, the other half that we keep is actually just going right back into storytelling to fund future stories we also do work with uh, film and TV studios. So a lot of our stories are of interest to producers in that world. And so we have longtime representation in Los Angeles uh, and they work to sell our stories to, to studios. So and that's also something that we split with our contributors. Um, so again, if we're benefiting, they're benefiting. The Atavist, I think, is uh, a representation of how uh, Automatic as a brand um, and WordPress.com within that as a you know tool set 
um, can be very empowering for publishers of all sizes. You know, we're a small publication, not a legacy publication. We consider ourselves pretty nimble and innovative. And that makes sense within the automatic mandate. And you know, now that we are built fully with our new website on WordPress.com, um, and specifically through Newspack and and uh, the the set of tools that was created for that. Um, I like to think that we are showing how dynamic and flexible those tools can be for storytellers. In June, we are uh, launching the first podcast, narrative podcast that we've helped develop. Uh, Cadence 13 is the uh, podcast company that is producing, directing, and uh, distributing it. Uh, and it is a fun true crime podcast <laughs> about an art heist, um, a the, the theft of a real pair of the ruby slippers worn in The Wizard of Oz um, that were taken from a small town in Minnesota and didn't come back for 13 years. So uh, we will be launching that in, in June, uh, I believe two episodes at first and then weekly after that. Also, there's a parade of elementary school students going by my window. I'm just gonna close my window.